Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 7 of Book 6. Now in this proposition, we again have two triangles, where we have an equal angle in both triangles. But instead of the ratio on the both sides of the equal angle being equal, what we have is the ratio about another angle being equal. So the ratio of A to B to BC is equal to D to E, EF. So we have an equal angle. These ratios are the same. And either beta and B are both less than a right angle, or beta and B are both greater than a right angle. If these conditions hold, then these two triangles are equal angular. So that's the proposition. So let's start with our proof. Now we're going to use proof by contradiction, which means that we are going to assume that this proposition is invalid, to go through some logical steps, and show a logical inconsistency. So our proof first is going to be based on the assumption that beta and b are both less than a right angle. So if this proposition is invalid, let's assume that alpha is greater than a. We could just as easily assume that alpha is less than a. The logic does not change. So let's assume that alpha is greater than a. We're going to draw a new angle in our spot here. So a, b, g, that angle will be equal to a, which is equal to d, e, f. So I have a triangle of gamma a and gamma a, and this is b. So according to Proposition 32 of Book 1, this angle here has to be B. Again, this is just because all the angles add up to 180 degrees, and gamma and alpha, gamma and alpha were the same, so the third has to be the same. So now we have these two triangles are equal angular. According to Proposition 4 of this book, that means that AB to BG equals DE to EF, that the ratios about the equal angles are the same. Well, AB to BC equals DE to EF. So if we take this here, AB to BC, which is equal to DE to EF, and place it there, we end up with this equation. So what we end up here is we have AB to BG is equal to AB to BC. Now, if AB to BG is equal to AB to BC, Again, this is equal, AB is equal on both sides, so we can effectively remove it according to Proposition 9 of Book 9, Proposition 9 of Book 5, sorry, and we end up that BG is equal to BC. So we have now that BG is equal to BC. So let's look at this triangle, BGC. Well, BG is equal to BC, which means it's an isosceles triangle, and that the angles at the base are going to be equal. Proposition 5, Book 1. So again, these two angles are equal. Well, beta is less than a right angle. B being the external angle to this triangle, this isosceles triangle, the sum of B plus beta has to be equal to 180 degrees, according to Proposition 13 of Book 1. Again, B plus beta has to be equal to 180 degrees. But we've established that beta is less than a right angle. And we started with B is less than a right angle. So if B is less than a right angle and beta is less than a right angle, then beta plus B can never be equal to 180 degrees. And there is our logical inconsistency. So consequently, this leads to a logical inconsistency, so it's not true. So alpha is equal to A. And if alpha is equal to A, Proposition 32, again, the equality of if alpha and A is equal to alpha and, sorry, if gamma and A is equal to gamma and alpha, then this two angles must also be equal. In other words, beta is equal to B. So we have alpha equals A, beta equals B, and thus, these two triangles are equal angular. 
So now we're going to prove this assuming that beta is greater than a right angle and b is greater than a right angle. So again, we have two triangles with one angle that is equal between the two, and we are comparing the ratios around another angle. So AB to BC equals DE to EF. And in this case, this proposition states that these two are equal angular. So let's prove this, again, by contradiction. We're going to go through the same steps we went through before, so I'll go through them rather quickly. Assume that ABC is greater than DEF, or in other words, alpha is greater than A. Construct the angle A on the point B, so that ABG is equal to DEF. These two triangles are equal angular, and because they're equal angular, then the ratio of AB to BG equals DE to EF. If AB to BG equals DE to EF, and DE to EF equals AB to AC, we can take this, plunk it into our equation there, and we end up with AB to BG is equal to AB to BC. Again, now we can ignore the AB because it's the same on both sides, and we have that BG is equal to BC. So BG is equal to BC. So far, this is exactly what we did for the first proof. Now let's look at BGC. Again, it's an isosceles triangle. So beta, are the angles at the base are equal, so these two are beta. So we have BGC equals BCG. But BGC is equal to beta and beta is greater than one right angle. So we have a right angle and a right angle, or greater than or equal to a right angle, at the base of our triangle, and this is impossible according to Proposition 17 of Book 1. I think we have a straight line, base of our triangle, we have two lines coming in like this. If the sum of these two triangles is greater than or equal to 180 degrees, these two lines don't intersect anywhere on this side. That's essentially what uh, Proposition 17 Book 1 is referring to. So basically we're saying that both of these angles greater than a right angle could not produce a triangle. So that's where our logical inconsistency comes in. And because this logical inconsistency we know this is not true, so we have alpha is equal to A, beta is equal to B, and the two triangles are equal angular. So finally, we have that if we have two triangles, where we have an angle that is equal between both triangles, and the ratio of the sides around a different angle are equal if beta and B are both greater than or equal to 90 degrees, or if beta and B are less than 90 degrees, then these two triangles will be equal angular.